How's it, guys? Welcome to this episode of the Diverge podcast. This week, we'll be looking back on the Sunlam Cape Town Marathon and the Prince George Monumental 100 Miler, and then looking forward to F&B Wines to Wales with the Chardonnay race in particular coming up next weekend. It's getting close, just, just close enough to uh, catch the first of the long-term weather forecast. And yeah, it's Wines to Wales, hey? So you know what that holds in store. And then also a little bit of an update on the route conditions from to Helen back, which is also coming up in November. But let's dive right in to the short cast and uh, look back on the Sunlum Cape Town Marathon. This year's Sunlum Cape Town Marathon is the first edition that forms part of the um, build-up to the Abbott World Marathon Majors qualifying. Um, it's 24, 25 and then 26 they make the decision I believe and uh, all went very well uh, surprisingly not a single car on the marathon route which no one really believed was going to be possible being Cape Town and, and all but uh, yeah the organizational team in the city managed to pull that off um, but then first of all things kicked off on the Saturday with the peace run the 5 and 10 k's there some pretty fast times run in difficult conditions and in, in the wind um, and then the trail runs, the trail runs at the Sunlam Cape Town Marathon the, um, were, were very fiercely contested. Uh, the 22K um, was won for, for the third time by uh, Sibonzizo uh, Sondaka and uh, third time in a row that he's won that averaged just under four minutes a K for that uh, 22K. And it's a relatively technical, like runnable but there is still a fair amount of climbing in that and he absolutely blitzed it um three times defending champion there um so a really fantastic race by him Mila Geldenes won the women's race it's sort of getting to a point now where if it's on a really fast course that Mila might be over that 20 20 to 25k distance might be almost unbeatable at this at this stage um yeah, I think I think it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for anybody. She is she is so quick coming from coming from the road background herself, and um, yeah, really, 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 really speedy flight of slight of foot, flight of foot. I don't know, uh, runner there in the forty four k the the trail marathon. Catherine Williamson, who will be familiar to mountain bikers from her epic uh, victory back in twenty thirteen alongside Yolandi Speedy, she won the the forty four k. Also making use of the the runnable sections of the route, the 44k the marathon was a little bit easier this year than it has been in uh, in previous years. A little bit more runnable than it has been in previous years. Um, so while Kath lost some time on on the descent down Nursery Ravine um, from the top of Table Mountain down to um, down into Newlands, ach, into Newlands, into Kirstenbosch, sorry, she uh, she managed to make it up on. Uh, on the sort of contour, the gradual climb, and then contours past the blockhouse along the front of Table Mountain. Um, so yeah, I think um, exciting, exciting running there. She uh, held off uh, R Rebecca Watney, um, who maybe a little bit tired, or actually was tired after, after Otter, um, and uh, not many. Kath Williamson also ran ran out. I think she was fourth at at Otter. So um, yeah, great run by by Kath to take the victory there. Uh, and then Colin Kinwambo won won the men's race again. Colin also um, utilizing those flatter sections to really put the put the pace down. And um, yeah, that new route I think is a little bit more suited to the to the faster runners um, rather than the very technical runners. In the in the past, it was quite a technical route um which suited the mountain goats a little bit better but this one sort of uh, suits the speed merchants a bit better so we'll see what happens next year if they'll stick to stick to that that route but um yeah exciting running there and uh good to see a very competitive field in both men's and women's um the 44 kilometer there in the trail marathon then on to the sunlam cape town marathon itself on sunday and for South Africans was incredible. Glenn Roshaba smashed the South African national record and 
the Sunlum Cape Town marathon record, running away with 729,000 Rand in prize money. Um, dollar adjusted $25,000 for the win, another $15,000 for the course record, plus another 25,000 Rand for uh, the South African record. So, yeah, great day in the office for, uh, for Glen Rose there. It was her marathon debut. She was putting bullish. Um, in the press conference on Friday already saying that she was going to go out hard and then on Sunday after the race she said that um, she had been targeting the the national record and uh, the Cape Town Marathon record which were only a second apart so you know pretty perfect really the the marathon the Cape Town Marathon record um, was 224 uh, 224.03 02 and the and the South African record had a stands record which she set in Valencia last year was uh, was 224.03 so only a second in it there and uh, Glen Rose going in 222.22 on her marathon debut um, holding off some pretty big names in, including a um, former uh, former world champion and uh, the defending champion of of the race. So yeah, amazing running by Glen Rose and some great things to come. I think from her as well. So that's what she could do on debut, and then also just saying, you know, the first the first twenty one k's was a mid tempo run for her, and then um, you know suffered suffered a little bit between uh, twenty five and and thirty, but then got back into it and uh, and smashed the loss. But tough conditions as well, very windy on on Sunday, strong southeaster blowing. So to run that sort of pace in those conditions took some doing. Um, in the men's race, uh, Adise Tola won the men's race in uh, Tour 816, which was also a course record. Only a course record by 16 seconds, uh, well, 15 seconds, sorry, but uh, still, nonetheless, a course record. He's uh, the 22-year-old brother of the current Olympic gold medalist and another young man with a bright future ahead of him. Um, the Ethiopians, the Ethiopian contingent, contingent at this year's Sunlam Cape Town Marathon won uh, they t took a clean sweep of the men's podium places, second in the women's race. So four out of the six podium places um, going to the Ethiopians there. And uh, they really seem to excel out here in, in Cape Town. And uh, yeah, um, very, very impressive running all round. But I think the big, the big success for South African marathon running is obviously Glen Rose, but then also the fact that it looks like the the marathon, the Cape Town Marathon, will be um, becoming an Abbott uh, World Marathon major and joining the likes of Boston Marathon, Chicago Marathon, New York Marathon, London um, on that on that huge uh, international roster. So that'll be very cool, and it'll be good to see um, more exciting athletes, more world class athletes coming out to South Africa to take part in uh, in the not too distant future. Then moving on to gravel racing in uh, the Prince George Monumental 100 miler. Uh, chilly day on the top of uh, the Swartberg Pass and then sort of warmed up after that. The 100 miler, of course, started in Prince Albert and uh, finished in Louvain because Montague Pass is currently closed to vehicle traffic. You can mountain bike down it. It might be a little bit uncomfortable on a gravel bike still. Apparently, is a bit of a sort of a single track kind of section that the George uh, locals have cleared out there. So it is rideable, but not perhaps not on a gravel bike and not on a gravel bike race. Um, Toyota Specialized Alex Miller went over the top of the mountain first, and that's only like 20 k's in. So uh, after that, he sat, sat up a bit. Um, Q36.5's Travis Stedman um, caught him after that, and the two of them worked together for quite a, quite a long way. Um, and then uh, Alex dropped the hammer in the last 20Ks, got away, won the race comfortably. Travis uh, was second uh, ahead of Arnu de Toy in third. Arnu um, spent a long time on his own out there, but a uh, strong ride for, for Arnu in third, which bodes well for, um, for insect science leading into, um, into wines to whales. Though, of course, the, uh, the big worry for all of them is the strength of Alex Miller and uh, his formidable partner, Matt Beers. But uh, more on those two a little bit later. In the women's race at Prince George, Sarah Hill um, took the victory there. 
uh, she went over over the King of the Mountain or Queen of the Mountain hotspots at the top of uh, Swartburg Pass, second, just behind Robin de Groot, and then uh, descended like an absolute demon, got into a, a strong group with some with some guys and uh, worked together with them and stayed stayed ahead of uh, the chasing woman's pack behind. That and that pack included Cherise Willis, who ended up finishing second, and Yulandi de Villiers, who was third. Samantha Saunders um, was part of that group for a while, but had one of those horror days. Ended up puncturing multiple times, tore a sidewall, had to put a tube in, had to put a second tube in. So uh, Sam had a a very difficult day, but uh, yeah, Sarah um, took the victory there, and uh, she's given us a little recap on the race as well. Take it away, Sarah. I think, you know, with a field like Robin de Groot and Charisse and Yolandi, um, Kath Colleen was supposed to be here, I was really intimidated and I wasn't sure if I was going to able to race to my strength. Starting on a climb, it's, it's scary starting on a climb. And, um, oh, and Sam, of course, like Sam was pushing the pace for a long time. And whilst trying to look around, I was also bleeding through my eyeballs, trying to chase Robin up she got the QOM, um, but that climb is, it's just like, it's never ending. And then eventually there's flags and you're at the top. And I just sent it down that pass as fast as I could because I knew Sam was gonna be on my tail. So I almost have tears in my eyes when I think about how important this win is to me. It's been an incredible second half of the season and this is the last race of my season. So I feel like I finished it off on a high and I absolutely cannot wait to see what happens in 2025. And then, despite Sarah saying that that is the end of the season for her, it is not in fact the end of the season because uh, we've had some developments subsequently to, uh, to the uh, Prince George and Sarah will in fact be racing F&B Wines to Wales alongside Vera Loza. Um, a little bit of a last minute substitution there ahead of the Chardonnay, which kicks off on f next week, Friday. Um, Danielle Stradom has been ill. Uh, she got ill during Cape Pioneer at the beginning of October and has sort of been battling that a little bit, hasn't been able to train properly, been off the bike as well. So Danielle's stepping down, ending her, so her season and uh, will now focus on building up towards next year. Obviously, Danelle's had a great year, South African marathon champion and gravel champion. So, um, yeah, I think some time off and some time to reflect on a good year will will serve her well, building up towards towards next season. And um, and then also, first of all, let's get to <laughs> let's get to the weather for F and B wines wines to Wales. So the long term forecast we can only see up until Saturday. At this point, Saturday, the 2nd of November, and uh, there's rain predict predicted. Of course, there's only 1.2 mils at this stage, but it's Scrabo and it's Wines to Wales, so I don't trust that report. I expect there will be more rain, and yeah, it's just one of those things. Hey, uh, even moving a week later, it just always seems to attract rain. Um, the route team has done fantastic work preparing the trails for this year's race. Of course, a new finish at uh, Benguela Cove on the Botrafir Lagoon. So a completely new final 15, 16 kilometers from Khafsabos, um, heading sort of southwest rather than the southeast from Khafsabos. Um, and uh, by the sounds of it, the that those trails are going to be very cool. Um, JK, Johan Krichler has done some amazing work in Lawrenceford as well. He's got what he's called the Tower of Power, which is a spiraling bridge that goes up and down around, around a big uh, gum tree. There's two levels to it, so uh, that's going to be cool to see. And then lots of other bridges that they've built, including a suspension bridge, which they've built over the Yakos River at the Hohook Hotel initial estimates for that bridge when they first got a civil engineer in to to draw it up and to plan it was 1.2 million um jk and the guys from the hotel have ended up doing it themselves but it's had to be signed off by an engineer as well because it's on a public public uh space um at the bottom of the hotel grounds so 
it's going to be cool to see that that bridge um, and all the work that has gone into that, as well as the work that's gone into the new Poffies, which uh, JK reckons Poffies 4.0 now, and uh, he reckons it's going to be the best Poffies yet, basically taking everything that they've learned over the last um, 15 years of building Poffies to make the best one yet. And uh, yeah, it'll be exciting to see that. As for the elite fields, the defending champions, Candice Lil and uh, Tyler Jacobs are back. They obviously have uh, bike boards number one and uh, Vera and Sarah Hill will be teaming up, of course. Uh, Margot Moschotti and uh, Constanza, <laughs> Costanza, um, the Italians, or French, French woman and the Italian, no strangers to the epic series. They'll be, they'll be racing together as well, as will Isla Stone, Katie Leonard. Um, a little bit further down that list, the exciting combination of uh, Tiffany Keep and Bianca Hall will be pair, a pair to watch. Bianca was absolutely flying at, um, at Cape Pioneer, was well ahead of the women's teams um, riding solo at Cape Pioneer. So it's going to be interesting to see how her and, uh, and Tiff get along get on tiffany of course has been racing on the road this year so um yeah be very interesting to see how those those two go and uh if they can take the fight to uh candace and tyler and uh, vera and sarah i think i think they are probably going to be the top three top three favorites there in the women's race in the men's race buff megamo popular buff megamo team hans becking and vote Alleman are uh, out from uh, from the Netherlands and uh, and Belgium to to race so that's going to be very cool they're up against the specialized Toyota team or Toyota specialized team of uh, Matt Beers and uh, Alex Miller South African and Namibian I think Matt and Alex are probably the favorites there but uh, we also have insect science of course in Buko Paga Eurostills Michael Foster and uh, Jaden Tolo teaming up Michael was sick for uh, Cape Pioneer, but he's back for Wines to Wales. And they were very strong, or Jaden was very strong. Jaden was possibly, alongside Adnu, the strongest rider in the race. I think he might have been stronger than Adnu um, at Cape Pioneer. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they go, if they can take the fight to uh, some of the more fancied teams. Um, Full Base and Peter Detroit racing together for Piger 2. Rousseau Becker and Cronier Beckers for Valley Electrical. Um, Rudy Kuhn and Johan van Sale teaming up again as well as uh, as Imbuco Specialized Toyota um, and uh, Honeycomb Pro Cycling as well, Mark Pritson and Tristan Nokia. So it's an exciting lineup, um, very deep lineup there in the, in the men's race as well. 18 teams in the men's race, uh, 12 teams in the women's elite race. So it's going to be a fierce, another fiercely contested Wines to Wales, but we'll bring you more on that next week, um, including some interviews with uh, with the woman as well from from registration. Hopefully, with the woman from from registration at uh, F and B Wines to Wales at Lawrenceford next week, next week Thursday, before the race kicks off on the first on uh, on Friday, and then uh, the last item of business for this week to Helen back. Um, Zane Schmal and his team did a route recce, went down into Hamka's Kloof over the weekend, and uh, Zane's got a pitch report from the road conditions of uh, the road to hell. Take it away, Zane. Okay, so the road into the hull is always going to be a challenge, no matter the condition or the surface of the road, um, on your mountain bike or vehicle for that matter. Uh, we've gone in on Sunday and to check out the conditions of the road, mainly to, to establish whether we'll be able to get uh, tracks on the road for the logistics and our vehicles and that sort of thing. And also like understanding what has changed from last year. We had reports that the road got fixed and that it's in a lot better condition. Um, and obviously wanted to test it on our own bicycles to make sure it's a pleasurable ride. Um, we can happily report that there's been a lot of work on the road and it's in much better condition. Um, we will be able to get all our logistical vehicles into the Hamkeskloof 
and um, yeah, that that may, is a big sigh of relief for us for organizing the 30th to Hell and Back mountain bike stage race. I think that riders will also be happy with the road conditions, taking in mind that it's still a gravel road into one of the most remote, remotest valleys in South Africa. And it will be a challenge. Um, it, there's still some sections that are rocky and loose, um, but the majority of it has been, uh, there's been a grader over it um, earlier this year, but also we've had more rain again after that. So there will still be that normal loose rocky sections, but um, for the majority of the ride, it's, it's a much better ride. The descent of Ierland's Pass into the the hull or the Hamkes Kloof, and obviously on the Sunday the climb out of the hull um, is is probably the roughest section at the moment. It's quite um, it's quite loose, so care will need to be taken on on the downhill into the Kloof. But then the great news is the section that probably was in the worst condition last year of uh, down in the the 10 k is basically down in the Hamkes Kloof is in much much better condition um we've spoken to the water um uh, uh, guys about the Hamka dam and releasing of water down the Hamka river um and it looks like we'll be in the clear and won't have high water crossing as we cross the the Hamka river with our vehicles and the bicycles during the race um, and yeah, it's uh, nice and green and lush down at Boerplas in the Hull, and we're looking forward to another great to Allenbach mountain bike race. Thanks, Zane. And that is it for this week's Diverge podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, please share your feedback, positive, negative, whatever. Let me know, and uh, let me know what else we can add into the mix going forward. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Until next time, cheers.